Hello, welcome to Flory Models. I'm Philip Flory. Review time. Something a little bit different, um, certainly from a manufacturer I haven't seen or dealt with before. This is the TACOM, or TACOM. Uh, this is the Leopard C2. Um, basically, this is the Canadian uh, MBT or main battle tank, everything else. But as I said, I haven't seen this manufacturer before. To be honest, this is one of our members, Pete's Kits, uh, and he's lent it to me to review. Um, and I actually haven't even looked inside the box yet, so it's all going to be a surprise. First thing you notice, uh, it's a very nice standard glossy brush. Um, you've got the usual type of details of about what you actually get inside the box. Uh, the numbering of this one is number 2003, uh, which I resume is its uh, third one it's done rather than its year. So we've got a couple of markings as you can see on the box. So uh, we've got the Afghanistan markings from 2006 on the tanks. A uh, bit of artwork on there, it's the proto version. What you're going to get in the box, as we can see, we've got um, multicolored styrenes, uh, some hulls, what looks like we've got um, some little bit of photo etch, a little bit extra, and a Afghan local. Uh, things like that we go through. So as you can see, something's a little bit different. So let's have a look in the box. It's a very nice box. I know I'm a weirdo with boxes, so I love boxes and things like that, but it's actually quite a nice box. Immediately, as you can see down in here, we've got some nice separately bagged for the different colors and everything else. God, is that trash. Okay, and then we're finished. What I'm going to do is, before I'm making complete words of myself, I'm going to just pop down and have the instructions. Again, quite nice. So we've got in here a heat sealed bag. So we're going to whip this guy open. Carefully go down there so we don't end up cutting everything. So in here, we actually get. Uh, we've got some uh, grommets, rubber grommets there, locking grommets we've seen before lots and lots of times. So we've got a set of them. We've got a little a couple of bits of clear uh, plastic, which we're assuming are for the lights, which aren't massively clear, shall we say, but they'll suffice for the lights. A little bit of string, which no doubt would be a case of uh, paint it um, metal or black or whatever you want to do and do it. Quick tip, if you get a little bit of wax, on your fingers and rub it down it, okay? That way you stop all the fibers and the hairs, they will lay down there. Then you paint them and it welds them on. So there we go, quick tip about doing that one. We got some little uh, decals here, very nice markings as you can see. So we got the scorpions, uh, looks like sort of a, uh, uh, well we've got the spider, uh, sort of Norseman type job there and something else in the middle. Some other type of markings down on there, the Canadian markings as you can see and everything else looking quite nice and it's a perfectly sealed in bag all right we've got a little bit of photo etch as you can see here so we've got some radiator grills uh, and very other parts which we'll have a look out for in a moment but again very nice little bag i love the way this is presented lovely little presentation okay looks like we've got an update sheet so this is obviously a slight difference to what we're going to get in the the booklet itself so it's showing here about obviously the um metal grill going in there, some other few metal parts, uh, and for opening up holes. So you've got numbers 6, 7 and 17, 18 and 24 parts got to be changed on there. We have here beautifully done, very glossy, shiny booklet, okay, with a fantastic maple leaf on the front. A little bit obviously about the actual squadron that actually went out taking the C2 into Afghan and everything else. And then we the job on, so <laughs> very old school, uh, the actual way for the little sort of applying them. We've got the usual call out for your parts tree, everything else like that, if this will all fit in one page, just about going through. And as you can see, usual way, so lower hull, starting to put all the main, the gear in, full length suspension, so you're going right the way across. Wheels going on, obviously, have a look at the Merkava. We talk about painting wheels, various things like that, and I think I showed it on a new show as well. Okay, and then obviously all the details running through the lower hull. First thing that strikes you um, looking at this is very clear, very, very simple, very crisp, very sharp, okay? So part seven, we've got down here, six and seven, we've got our upgrade sheet here talking about it. So basically we've got uh, a small little hole here saying about filling that one, which is to do with that one. And then we've got uh, part seven, which over here, again, there's a couple of holes. It's basically talking about filling holes actually and removing them, that's all it is. So it's not too much of a, a problem. It's not a definite correction. It's obviously something that's just missed off. 
Um, top half of the hull, some of the armour going in on the side, uh, some of the front armour going in there as we can see. Generally going across, again putting the tracks together. Uh, doesn't say how many, uh, but there will be lots of track to go together, no doubt. All right, working your way through. So this is that uh, cable system we were talking about. So you can pop that in, or obviously you can get replacement one. Right the way through, talking about the main gun area, up on the turret, putting this one in, all in there. I don't know what a heartbreak symbol means. Are we talking photo itches, the heartbreak symbol? Just want to check this. Uh, instant glue. So a heartbreak symbol actually means using um, uh, instant glue, which in our place super glue or you know CA glue. Um, but I haven't seen it as that symbol before, so that's going on there. Uh, talking about the decals going in, obviously you do that last. Okay, rear part of the armor. It's amazing. This turret looks like a sort of Cold War T72, T62 tank the way it is, and then it has the extra bits bolted onto it, which makes it the sort of more modern look. Um, but there we go. So anyway, going in. You've got the top gun as well, the turrets up and closed. This is lovely, this is very glossy. You've got your little Afghan man, which obviously is a real picture of it, putting in the turret usual way. Sometimes I cut those off so they can be positioned anyway. If you do that, just be careful that everyone knows you've cut them off because you get other people, they pick it up by the turret and it's okay until you get three feet off the table and then the bottom drops off. Yes, I have been there. Okay, so going in, you've got the markings as we were saying here. So we've got uh, do, 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 yeah, the 1986, the both ones from the Royal Canadian uh, Horses section uh, markings in there. So it obviously it is just off the two. And then obviously you've got four different markings for obviously different squadrons uh, going on there. Uh, attached both sides and everything else. Very nice. I have to say, I do love the way that's presented. It's simple, it's clear, very, very precise. It's not complicated at all, the way well it looks anyway. So, let's have a look in the bag. Right, let's start off straight in with the top and bottom turret. Okay. One piece lower hull. Okay, I know the armor guys, the purists out there, like to put them all together personally for mine. Saves a lot of time. So you can just do it like this. A couple of ejector pin re release marks, because obviously this is one piece injection molding, okay? Um, so you've got a couple of bits. Nice little weld lines running down there. Generally the detail is a little bit flat, shall we say. You know, we're not gonna get massively excited over it, but certainly it's all there. Uh, by the time you go around and liven it all up and everything else like that. Uh, you got the markings down there saying it's 2013, so we know it's a new kit and everything else. Top of the hull. Again, it's nothing you would say, wow, look at that detail. And don't take this the wrong way, but all armor to me looks the same, okay? Having only done very limited amounts of it, um, but there's only so many ways you can do a bolt. There's only so many ways you can do sort of weld lines and stuff like that. So it's not like with aircraft models, sometimes it's a lot better than others, shall we say. They tend to be with, um, or from my opinion, certainly, uh, when you look at the way armor models are, they've all reached a really high level. There's very rare you can get a NAF kit, especially if you're talking, you know, you can look at a Tamiya kit from sort of the 1970s and 80s. They don't look any different from a modern day one now by somebody else because, you know, they've got to that certain level of it. The only things that tends to change somewhat like this kit has got is the weld lines running around it. You know, it's quite nicely detailed the way that those goes in there and everything else. Uh, and as I call it, squish glue marks, because that's the easiest way to do weld work. But generally, as you can see, very nice running down in there. They've even taken the time, as you might be able to see here, these white marks, ejector pins, uh, they've taken them off. So somebody in a factory has got a pair of side cutters cutting them all off, which saves us doing it. Okay, let's see if we can get in these without destroying the bags. <coughs> Again, the other thing as well, when you look at the sprue, they are spaced out. Um, you know, they're not massively on top of each other, which again is quite a nice touch because you can get in there with a pair of scissors or your side cutters or a knife without destroying the part next to it. I'm just saying, it's just one of those little things you spot from doing this for far too long. Again, looking and feeling the riveting uh, detail on the top or the bolt detail, I should say, very nice, very sharp. Um, when you run your finger over it, you can feel it. It's quite scratchy, which is nice. Okay, um, looking at it, tiniest amounts of flash, but I'm not even gonna say it's flash. Ejector pin marks do seem to be all nicely out of the way. They're all very, very shallow. Got a little bit of black marks on them, which tends to be the release agent as it's releasing everything from the mold. As you can see, the, the mold itself is quite dirty. 
Sometimes that happens when it's a brand new mold uh, and it happens when it's an old one. I'm guessing it's because it's very new. It makes it very sharp and everything else. But generally looking at the parts, very nicely done. Can't see any problems with this absolutely anywhere. Different as well, it's got a cut out. That's actually, normally it just says, but the actual, they're actually stamped out. The actual screw ones are quite nice. Again, looking at all the parts, little bit tiny bit flashy it's as if you're being really picky now and obviously the more i'm doing the reviews the more i'm being a little bit picky so if we just drop this top camera down a little bit closer and we just bring the side one in just that fraction more you can see what i'm talking about here i'm just talking about really in this one here if i put probably without the finger underneath it's better but you might be able to see it's just got the holes are slightly closed now don't get me wrong you can come in here with something tiny like a little uh one of the, you know you've got something on your little pin vise a little tiny one and you can come in here and this is perfectly the right size and you can clean them out with ease and it makes a real nice thing so really you're not worried about it the gun itself quite nicely detailed everything else is very nice i can't see any problems with that whatsoever but say if you look at the sprue it does seem to be very spaced out versus other ones where they tend to be very much on top of each other and things like that Okay, we'll do him last because I'm going to repeat him last. Alright. Some of the heat sealing on the bag isn't brilliant, hence they just pop open. So, duplicate sprue. So we won't need to see that one again. Again, looking at the wheels, as you would expect, looking at, you know, obviously some of the, um, the tie eyes, things like that. Uh, the axles running right the way through. Very, very clean. Very, very crisp. Again, as I say stamped out on this one here quite a nice touch but the nut and bolt details are actually in the wheels and everything else and all the small parts very nicely crisply done nothing wrong with that at all practical weight will last as well so this little guy we're going to touch up here we've got the top turret so as you can see, this top turret, we've got a uh, limited cast marking. It's actually very greasy with uh, release fluid. Um, I'm guessing it's a new mold. They tend to be like that. But you do have very nice things like here, like this texture uh, on the actual, I assume that's the main gun uh, area. Uh, it's very, very nice. Got some nice different reliefs on that. The actual main port itself for the gun looking very, very good in the coax areas, nicely detailed. There's no, um, it doesn't look like a cast, uh, like cast iron, you're assuming this probably is the way the turret is actually done. Um, there's none on there, but the weld marking all the way around it is very, very nice. You know, no problems with that at all. It does seem to be pretty good. Looking at the main gun itself, again, nice details with all the covers on there and the cover latches put in there. The hatches, again, you know, nothing you can complain about. No flash on this particular sprue whatsoever. A couple of tiny ejector pin mark. Uh, you might be able to see them just down here on my finger. You've got down there where obviously the pin, it's got a little bit of release around it, but this is me being extremely picky now. Generally, nothing you would worry about anywhere on that. Very nicely done. Nice and clean. <coughs> Okay. Yeah, just burnt all the way through, or just around the blade. <coughs> and here. Okay, so again, side armor units uh, again quite nice nice texture to it you've got that sort of flat dead flat texture there is little raised ridges on there between as if it has got the armor sort of piled on top of each other okay these side skirt ones looking nice again the general raised relief area very sharp very nice as you're working your way around tiniest amount of clap, flash and cleanup just required on some of these little parts down the side but again the only thing i'm what doing this and i'm thinking now matchbox you know you older modelers will know what i'm talking about now because when you get things and they're in different colored you know like this and it says in the box no paint required really <laughs> it's not green and diarrhea brown 
Okay, but generally, as you can see, got tiny little bits of flash on the actual mold here. I'm thinking this is probably because it's very, very new, um, and they do tend to get a tiny little bit of flash, and the release mold's a little bit heavy with the first few hundred out of the uh, the machine. So I think that's what's happening here. But generally, as you can probably see, it is. It's very nicely done. You know, ejector pin marks. They're all out of the way. Nothing's going to stand in your way of putting this particular one together. So now. Let's have a look at the tracks. Well, look, I'll tell you what, let's not. Oh, Gorman, you talk to me into it, as soon as the bag's falling open anyway. Let's just grab one screw. So we know we've got multiples of this particular screw, and then you're gonna get multiples of this. Okay. So actually what you've got is, on this one is a system of making your own flexible track. All right, which you don't get an option in the box for doing it out of rubber. So you are gonna spend an evening putting this together, but generally you've got the blocks. They all seem to be very nice, very sharp, very crisp. We've got no flash on this whatsoever. So apart from taking you forever to make a cleanup job on this, it is pretty straightforward. So basically what you actually have here is the main track itself. Then you've got the side bars going on and then these little guys go over each every one and it's these that link them together, hence they're in rubber. Now, if you want to make sure these never come apart, easiest way is thinned PVA glue right the way over the lot as you build it in sections. That's enough then to hold it all in, but it gives you the flexibility to do it. I know a lot of guys don't even bother because they do tend to hold very well. These do grip on very, very nicely when they actually anchor onto these. But if you don't want it to fall off and you know come apart and then obviously once you've got it all together you can get it down weight on wheels get the track pushing down you can put a tiny bit again thin pva glue because you'll get no leftover the capillary action draws it completely in which gives you a nice sort of rubber effect as if it's pushing down onto the track itself and everything so it just saves it all falling apart but you do get in there so what we've got here three yeah so you've got three sprues of track multiple links of this you've actually got uh, two, four, six, eight lots of that, I think that is, uh, in this particular bag, so it's a fair old amount in there. Right, last up, um, we won't bother getting him out of the bag because he's far too cute, but what you have got is a little Afghan, I presume local, with an AK. So I'm not quite sure why he's like that. But what he has got is a nice little AK-47, which is quite a nice touch. You've got him obviously wearing traditional clothes and things like that. Uh, positioned head, you will be able to position the arms and all those things that go along with it. So it's quite nice as we make our way through. And a nice little extra if you want to do a diorama. Personally, I think it might have been nicer to have some crew with it or something like that. But then again, I'm not sure about this kit. Perhaps they've done an aftermarket crew tank set to go along with this one. So it's personal as if however you want to do it. As said, first time looking at this, immediate my effects, you know, you know, my impressions of this one, I should say, is very nice, very clean, very sharp kit as well. As I said, it's the Canadian Leopard, so, you know, quite nice to see it in those wings. Beautifully printed, beautifully presented, nice to see it in separate bags like this, a decent quality box and everything else. So really, I can only give this a total thumbs up.